Howdy, Aaron Boster here with the Ohio Health MS Center, spending a few moments talking about drug monitoring and safety when taking Jelenia or Fingolimod. Prior to initiation of Jelenia, we feel that it's appropriate to do several examinations and laboratory checks to make sure that we're safe before starting. So let's review things that need to be done prior to initiation of Jelenia. I think that it's appropriate to have a skin exam. Uh, you want to document uh, the status of the moles and, and the skin prior to starting the, the drug. It's also important to have an assessment of the macula, and that's a structure in the back of the eye. We do that in our center using a machine called an OCT fundus machine, but there's other ways to do it. You can actually have an optometrist or an ophthalmologist use what's called a slit lamp and look in the back of your eye. And you want to make sure there's no macular edema. You want to make sure that historically the patient does not have a recent history of, of any cardiopulmonary problems. Particularly, you want to make sure that they haven't had uh, a heart attack of recent um, and that they don't have a known respiratory problem like a COPD or asthma. Uh, that would be something that would require some more testing with PFTs to look at the lungs. Going back to the heart, we need to have an EKG prior to starting Jelenia. And that's to make sure that there isn't this abnormality where there's a prolongation of these two points called the QT interval. So you need to get an EKG and make sure that's okay. And then we need to take a look at uh, some immune function. And so we want to make sure that the human has been exposed to the varicella virus. And so we draw a varicella IgG level. And we want to make sure that that's positive. If it's not positive, we need to immunize the human being and then retest later. We want to look at a complete blood count to look at their white blood cells, and I particularly want to look at their absolute lymphocyte count, so I know what that is before I start. And we also want to look at the liver function, and so I like to give it a, a liver panel so I can make sure that I know the status of their liver. And you want to make sure uh, that this person doesn't have opportunistic infections, and so if you don't already know, I think it's a good idea to cross things off your list, HIV, syphilis, or things that I may check for, um, other things like tuberculosis. And, this is just something to make sure that we know the playing field prior to getting started uh, modulating the immune response. Now, after you've gone through the preparatory work, then you're ready to participate in what's called the first dose monitoring. And this is a six hour period of time when you take your first pill and you have an EKG before you start and an EKG six hours later and vital signs every hour on the hour. And in order to be safe, you want to make sure that your heart rate, which will go down about 20%, has come back up above 55 prior to going in. And you want to make sure that that second EKG doesn't show that there's a significant prolongation of the QT. Once you have that, you've completed the first dose monitoring. You don't really have to worry about the heart again as long as you stay taking the medicine daily. These are the tests that are required, at least in my opinion, prior to starting uh, Jelenia. Now let's talk about the monitoring once you're on drug. I think once a year it's a good idea to have a skin exam. And I would encourage that for anyone who's taking this medication. Getting an eye exam, uh, there's a risk of macular edema. It's very, very low. It's uh, less than half a percent. And nonetheless, we want to make sure that we're safe. And so we typically want to check uh, the macula again. We like to do it around four months and then maybe once at the end of that first year. And as I said earlier, there's different ways of checking the macula. And you want to make sure that there isn't any edema. From a pulmonary standpoint, if we've cleared them ahead of time, we're probably okay because they don't have COPD or asthma. Um, but if they do have pulmonary complaints, um, you, then you would want to explore that. But there's nothing that we would manage routinely. With regards to laboratories, we're going to want to follow the liver enzymes because rarely uh, Jelenia can make the liver enzymes go up. And so we wouldn't want that to happen. And we also would check a complete blood count. Now, interestingly, as I talked about in another video, when you take Jelenia, it causes uh, many of your white blood cells to be trapped inside the lymph nodes in the spleen. And so if you draw blood, uh, then you can uh, look at the counts. You'll see that the, the counts are low, the absolute lymphocyte count. We draw that, and in fact, I find that to be a helpful monitor to see if the patient's taking drug, because if they're on drug, it's going to be low. But we also want to follow the white count to make sure that uh, there isn't other abnormalities. So Aaron Boster here talking about drug monitoring and safety with Jelenia. I listed a lot of things, and that sounds complicated at first, but having taken care of many, many people on Jelenia, your clinic can develop a rhythm, and it's simply important to make sure that you keep the patient safe. I hope you found this helpful. Uh, thanks a lot for tuning in. Have a great night. Thanks for tuning in, guys. If you like this video and would like to see more videos like this one, please subscribe to the channel.